You're listening to the Femcast Podcast, the podcast for women who are truly ready to drop the paralyzing perfectionism and self-doubt and just live their best hot mess life. Let's do this. This podcast is listener discretion advised for mature content and coarse language. Whatever. Hey, you guys, what is up? And welcome back to the show. I am so excited and grateful to have you here. Today is a very, very, very special day because I have a very, very special guest with me, somebody that I've been trying to get on this show for quite some time. Yay, we're here. It's happening. This is my conversation with Gabby Jockers coming up next. Gabby Jockers is a mindful boudoir photographer and the owner of Embodied Art Boudoir, a body positive boudoir studio in Golden, Colorado, just outside of Denver. She uses embodiment practices like meditation and breath work to help her clients get out of their heads and into their bodies. She is profoundly passionate about creating an experience for her clients that goes way beyond just a sexy photo shoot and serves as a stepping stone in the next step of their self-love journey, which you guys know I am all about. She's also the creator of The Body Deck, a body image focused affirmation card deck. Here is my interview with Gabby on body love, how to bring the sexy back into your life, even when you just don't feel sexy. Here we go. Let's do this. Gabby, I'm so excited to finally have you on the show. We've been trying to get this together for months. <laughs> and really I'm months. thrilled to have you here. <laughs> I'm so excited, Maria. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, absolutely. I, You know what? I've been following you for a while now. I love your feed. I love what you do. It is so magical to see how, you know, mm. confident women are in their bodies um, when they're working with you. I mean, it is like what you do is truly magical. And I, you know, I wish, you know, my biggest, my, my wish of this podcast is for everyone to kind of get to know you, follow you and recognize really what it is that you're doing. Cause it's so far beyond just boudoir photography. Like it's beautiful photography. Don't get me wrong, but it's so much more than that. Yep. Yep. I like to say one of my little catchphrases is more than just a sexy photo shoot. What is that? So what does that mean for you? Like when you say that, when you put it out there into the world, what is that? What is that more piece that women are getting sure. when with you? And I'll start with just in case anyone's not familiar with boudoir photography. I'll just kind of mention that yeah. really quick. It's a style of photography. Boudoir means bedroom in French. Yes. So you can kind of extrapolate from there. It's more intimate, more undressed, more raw style of photography than a simple portrait or a glamour portrait or like family photos, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it tends to be thought of as sexy photos and traditionally Mostly women are the ones doing uh, boudoir photo shoots, but it's open for men and any gender. Um, really, there's no um, limits. Uh, so when I say what I do is more than just a sexy photo shoot, it's very easy to go out there and find a boudoir photographer who will take photos that make you look super hot. Yeah. Um, that is pretty easy. That's the basic core requirement of, of the job. Yeah. <laughs> um, Though, don't even get me on my soapbox about photographers and <laughs> photographing only certain sh size or shape or color people because exactly. I can agree about that for hours. Um, one of yeah. the biggest problems in the industry as far as I'm concerned. But where I'm coming from, more than just a sexy photo shoot, that's what I arrived to after starting my business and really digging deep inside myself to see how can I truly serve people mm -hmm. through this style of artwork. And for me, the answer to that was pulling in my background in yoga, meditation, mindfulness. I did a yoga teacher training. I think it was like back in 2014. I'm not the best with dates. I stopped taking history classes as soon as they were not longer, no longer required by the curriculum. So I'm not really good at dates, but I yeah. think it was 2014. Yeah. And since then, I have really dived into yoga as a spiritual practice, as well as dabbled a little bit in the mindfulness side of things, which is rooted in Buddhism um, and meditation and how experiencing for myself, how getting connected, like truly experiencing being in my body yeah. transformed everything. 
about my life and the way that I perceive the world and the way that I move forward in the world, my confidence, my um, self-assuredness, um, that kind of stuff really, really became rooted and grounded when I was connected to my body. And that's the kind of experience I hope to offer uh, my clients is an experience where, yeah, you're going to look super hot in your photos, but I also don't want it to just be about the photos and the end result because my first boudoir experience, though the photos looked great, I don't really like looking at them because it ri- reminded me of the experience, which did not feel very empowering. Yeah. It felt very rushed. Like I was on the factory floor, like, Hey, come into this room, get a brief introduction of the names of these two strangers and then take off all your clothes and stick your butt in the air. Yeah. And it felt very much like my dignity almost was being sacrificed for the photo. Yeah. And that's the opposite of how I want my clients to feel when they come into my stu- studio. The outside world is so concerned with telling women what they can be, what they should not be, that they're too much, that they need to be yeah. louder or more or stand up straighter or talk louder or that they need to be quieter and not be so aggressive or yeah. whatever bitchy, whatever the thing is, the outside world is constantly telling women that they are too much or yeah. not enough. Yeah. And in my space, It is about you are exactly who you are. You will not be shamed or judged for expressing what's inside. And this is a space for you to connect to your body, to connect to your heart, to start putting the foundation of peace and love and joy and self-acceptance in your body, not just in your thoughts, not just in um, your words, but putting those feelings and those beliefs of worthiness, of love, of beauty in your body, grounding them in your body through the experience through guided meditation, intention setting, guided breathing, uh, guided attention, all this kind of stuff. So that when you leave the studio, you have not just created some beautiful artwork, but you have shifted the way that you think about yourself, the way the internal dialogue when you look at photos of yourself. And that is so powerful. Oh my God. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> it, 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 it's a str- it's something that I think like I, I can resonate with that so much because I even have internal dialogue when I take selfies for crying out loud. Oh no, that one sucks. That one sucks. That one sucks. That one sucks. Mm-hmm. And it could mm-hmm. literally take you an hour to take a selfie sometimes. And the reality is, is, you know, there is something so powerful in what you said in terms of, you know, you look at these other boudoir photographers and you can see it like, yes, the shot, just like you said, the shots are beautiful and they're glamorous and they're sexy and they're all these things. But there's this like, there's this, there's this discomfort that you can kind of see when you're looking at the photo where the person is not really connected to their body. They're not really inside their body. They're more focused on, oh my God, how do I look right now? And you can totally, see that discomfort in the photo when pe- when I see women in your photo there's something so organic and beautiful about it and natural um I'm putting the intention out there that if I ever have a self-love retreat you're coming and you're doing photo shoots for all of the participants but anyway um I think there's just something so beautiful to you know when you can come into that that space of grounding in your physical body, all that love and acceptance for yourself, it really is the big difference. You know, anyone can go out there and make a sexy photo shoot and anyone can go out there and teach radical self-love, you know, for your body. And, and, you know, especially when they have this beautiful, perfect body and they're posting it all over Instagram as, as an ideal, when you can take every woman and have her feel beautiful and comfortable in her skin, that is a superpower. And that is is exactly what you do. And I want to make it clear that not everybody has an amazing, transformative, loving experience because the reality of the situation is human being a human is messy. Some women come in and they have a challenging experience because they're seeing so much more of their body than they may have ever seen before. And that's okay. That's part of the experience. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to not have made it yet. You don't need to have uh, gotten to this pinnacle of confidence and self-love to do something like this for yourself. And I think that would stop Mm -hmm. a lot of people from even trying. It's okay to have negative emotions, what we consider negative emotions. It's okay to have difficulty and to struggle and to feel challenged during this process. But what matters is 
number one, that you're in a space that you feel safe enough to express that, that yeah. you feel like it's okay that you're having a difficult experience because yeah. it's not all sunshine and rainbows, especially it's when it comes to body image. it's just not, let's be real. Yeah. Um, And number two, what matters is your intention, because you may not, there's no magic pill or switch of a flip of a switch, whatever, to go from body hate or body dysmorphia to body love, right? And total body positivity. What matters is your intention to take you from one step where you are one step farther along your journey. If you can get a little closer, if you can go from looking at a photo of yourself and only seeing things to criticize to looking at a photo of yourself and also seeing the way that your personality is shining through, even if you don't completely fall in love with that photo and completely fall in love with your body, that itself, just that shift in perspective to only focus on the negative and instead focus on the whole being. And and focus on what's bright and joyful and love in you. That is powerful, even if you haven't made it yet. So I don't want to, I just, I just like to be clear about that because I don't want anyone to think that this is like a quick fix or anything. And I don't want anyone to think that there's no space for them to have a difficult experience as well. There's nothing wrong with challenge. And a lot of times boudoir photos can be challenging to look at. And that's why I'm there to help you put, things in perspective. Before we look at a single photo, I'm bringing my clients back. I'm saying, Hey, what do we do when we look at photos of ourselves? And everybody agrees with me. We zoom right into the part that we have the most challenging relationship with. I'm guilty of it. So many of us do it. It is already going through body parts in my head of of what I would have a challenge with. (laughs) Right? Exactly. But what I like to tell people is you're not just a collection of body parts. You can't just oh, take out the belly, take out the arms, take out this, take out that. And then I'll be left with something that I love. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Sorry. <laughs> we're not robots that you can like, we're not Barbie dolls that you could just yeah. like replace pieces. That's not who we are. We are humans, flaws and all. So instead, rather, um, so instead what I do is I remind my clients of their intention. You came in here today because you wanted to see the beauty. You wanted to see the joy. You wanted to see the confidence in yourself. So when you look at these images, you may not love every single part of them because yeah. that's you know, the nature of being in a body image healing journey. Yeah. However, look at these photos and see the things that you want to see in yourself. Cause I can see them. I can see that beauty, that joy, that confidence, that sexiness, that power, that comfort in your own skin. And when you look at them, this is how we start to take that journey Uh, take that next step on our journey is by looking at them with the intention that we want to be living. That's the practice part of it. Intention setting is all theory until you start applying that intention to the way that you're living. And we start in this session by applying that intention to the way I shoot their session. I ask their intention at the beginning so that I customize the poses and the emotions and the expressions we're playing with to bring out the things that my client wants to see in themselves. And then when we get to the photo viewing, reminding them, hey, remember, these are the things that you wanted to see in yourself. I definitely saw them. Now, when you're looking at your photos, I want you to zoom out, not in on the part that you have a difficult relationship yeah. but zoom out and see the whole beautiful human in this image, see the heart and the personality and the spirit shine through. And that is taking that next step. Hey, gorgeous. I hope you are loving this episode so far. We are going to get right back into it. But before we do, let me ask you, Are you through with entertaining toxic, emotionally unavailable relationships and situationships that will never see you as anything more than just an option? Are you ready to up-level your standards and bid farewell to the era of it's complicated relationships once and for all? Can you imagine what it would be like to walk around confident as fuck knowing that you're surrounded by more loving and fulfilling relationships that always treat you like you're the only woman in the room? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you're exactly who I created my Up Level and Flow private mentorship program for. The online one-on-one coaching program that has been specifically designed to help you up level all your relationships and your life. Whether you're looking to attract more loving and fulfilling relationships or up-level existing ones, this program is for you. My up-level and flow mentorship program will take you from the woman who is constantly settling for less than she wants and deserves in her relationships and in her life, 
who has pretended to be content with the it's complicated relationship status for far too long, to the woman who dares to raise her standards and expect more out of her life and her relationships and actually get it. Never ever chase anyone again. Be the one and the one will chase you. Send me a DM at the Femcast on Instagram or email me at maria at femcoach.com for more details. Let's get back to today's episode. Love that. I love that so much. And I think, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, the purpose of, of even this conversation is, is really, you know, learning to, to love the whole self. What I'm hearing is two things is number one, it's okay. You're going to have parts of yourself that you're just not going to love. I, I, I will probably never fall in love with my menopausal belly. I will probably never fall in love with my cellulite. And that's just the way it gets to be. But I think that to what you're saying is that those get those parts of us get to exist, but we also get to identify other parts that we actually do love, that we do think are beautiful. Um, and also recognizing, you know, not we're not just a physical body. We're also a spiritual being, an emotional being and learning to recognize all of those parts of ourselves when we're looking at and crit and, and, you know, not going down that 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 critical path of, you know, when we're self shaming and, and loathing. but you know, recognizing that there's parts of ourselves that maybe we don't love so much, but also taking a time out to look at all of the other stuff that we do recognize and love and appreciate. And that's really what I'm hearing from you. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. There's no, a lot of people get scared by the idea of body positivity because they, a lot of people hear body positivity and think, oh, I'm going to have to love my menopausal belly. I'm going to have to love my cellulite. And you know what? That's just not everyone's going to get there. And that's totally fine. You don't have to love every single ingrown toenail to love yourself (laughs) and to respect yourself, to treat your body with care. You don't have to love your belly to treat your belly with care, to put things in it, nourish it and make it feel good, to give it little massages, to clean Mm -hmm. it in the shower. You know, don't let all that lint build up. (laughs) You don't need to have an unequivocal I love how this looks. I love everything about myself to treat yourself with love, with respect, with care, especially for folks dealing with um, injuries, disabilities, chronic illness or chronic pain. There's a lot of the physical experience that is very challenging for those people. There's a lot of times where the body feels like it's betraying them, but don't need to love, 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 and feel super duper positive about everything to treat yourself with love. I love that. Thank you so much. I have two questions for you that I want to ask. Um, and then I have some audience questions. So we're going to, awesome. we're going to hot seat you for a couple of minutes. Um, if that's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one question, you know, we talked, we, you touched on a little bit and I know we talked, we, we talked about uh, so many things when we, when we initially chatted at, and explored what we were going to, where we were going to take this conversation today. But one of the things that you kind of touched on today, and I, I really, I really want your perspective on it we see a lot of self-love body positivity coaches out there posting on Instagram, a lot of influencers, you know, in these you know, super sexy poses mm-hmm. that have literally picture perfect bodies, picture perfect bodies, beautiful filters, beautiful clothes, beautiful scenery, beautiful images. And we're constantly bombarded with these self-love messages from people that, and, and I can tell you this even from personal experience, if I, if I go back to my, the beginning of my journey when I was struggling with really loving and accepting myself, I would see these people and I would say to myself, it's so easy for you to say that because you're perfect. Of course you love yourself. But what does that say and, and do to somebody like me who maybe is really struggling? Like where, what's your take on this industry and where, you know, when it comes to boudoir photography, body love, self love, What's your take on the industry in general? And how would you love to do it differently? Like, how would you love to see it change? Uh, That's a great question. I have a few thoughts and I'm going to keep them pretty concise. Number one, you might be shocked at how many people who have that quote unquote societal ideal perfect body struggle with body dysmorphia. I don't know if you've ever heard the saying that it's better to get third place than second place because second place, you're just like that. You could have gotten first place, right? Yeah. And third place, you're like, cool, I just placed. Yeah. I feel like the folks with the bodies that look closer to that uh, standard 
cultural, like Western American cultural ideal feel like I'm almost there, but I'm not. And they yep. feel just, I've seen, I've seen bigger cases of struggling with accepting their body from people in small bodies, petite bodies than in people with larger bodies, because they're just like, well, I'm not small. So I just got to accept myself. To hell right? with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's just one thing I want to put out there that it, just because somebody looks a certain way on the outside, we still don't know what's going on inside. So Absolutely. having compassion and empathy for those people as well. Um, the struggle that they're facing may be different um, than somebody in a bigger body, but um, that doesn't mean they're not still struggling with something. Um, at the same time, I think it is doing a huge disservice to to folks of all shapes and sizes to not share beauty in all shapes and sizes. I have a real grudge against uh, other boudoir photographers and other photographers who put on their website only thin white um, fit kind of, you know, like looks like a model type bodies. Um, And I have a lot of clients who've come to me saying, I picked you because I saw people that look like me on your website. Yeah. And that is not even a question for me. It's not even, should I diversify? It's, not an option. My website, yeah. if I claim to um, be body positive, it needs to show love toward all types of bodies, all shapes, all sizes, colors, ages. Ages is yes. a big one. That's a big um, one that people maybe. don't talk about enough. Yes. Yes. There's so many. It's like the age cutoff is like three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, this is ridiculous. <laughs> the, uh, 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 like American culture has an obsession with like shoving mm-hmm. older women, postmenopausal, post middle age women out of the public sphere. I think it's super messed up. Um, yeah. and I really dislike it. And so, um, I it's almost, myself, like, it's almost like the world puts an off switch on your yeah. on your desirability. It's like as soon as you pass a certain age, it's like shh, cut off, done. <laughs> and not even just desirability, but like how many um, women do you see with gray hair? How yeah. many women do you see um, at a club of, of, of over 60 years old or at a festival or a concert? It's like, oh, when you're older, you have to disappear from public life. Nah, screw that. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't trust it. <laughs> Whoever no. sent that message, I don't trust it. Um, I definitely believe 100 percent that our media, our our media needs to represent people of all shapes, sizes, ages, colors, ability levels, et cetera. Um, and not kind of hide the ones that the past, like our history has told us are less ideal. Like, screw that. Like, why are we still listening to some advice from some like old dude in the 1940s about what women have to be in order to be excited? I, I don't, care you know yeah so those are my trying to be concise thoughts on that I love it I love it I love it and I you know what I do love the first one because it's true sometimes women who are just close to that ideal or you know are 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 so much more harder on themselves than some of the rest of us might be so having compassion for that I think is really important so thank you um okay so um in terms you know as women, we're doing a million things, right? We're go- we're going to work, we're going to school, we're taking care of our families, we're kids, parents, spouses, friends. We're we're in a million different places. It is very easy, I think, to get caught into that trap where you know we're kind of putting ourselves last and not taking care of ourselves and really giving ourselves, filling our own cup, so that we feel good and sexy, right? Um, in our bodies, in our life, in our relationships. How, what is your, what is your advice to help the woman bring the sexy back in her life when she's not feeling sexy at all, (laughs) right? When she's got like the baby vomit on her and the, you know, how, how does, how do you help women tap into the sexy? That's such a good question. And the thing is the answer could be a million miles long because it really depends on the individual. So I would say start with going inward, start with feeling where, where you're feeling the lack right now. Is it a matter of not feeling sexy because of, um, you know, your intimate relationship with your partner or because when you look in the mirror, all you see is sweatpants and, and like messy hair or, um, 
like what exactly doesn't feel cared for in you right now? Um, there's a really great book I read recently called The Pleasure's All Yours, and it defines um, pleasure in a few different categories. There's like sensual pleasure, which is pleasure around touch. Um, there's uh, like a lived pleasure, like pleasure at being alive. Like you just did a fun hike or, or a hard workout or you just had a baby and yeah, whoa, amazing. This is life, right? Yeah. Um, and there's a couple more, which I read this a few months ago. And if my history comment didn't uh, didn't uh, reveal me. I don't have great memorization skills. <laughs> but I don't remember I, anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I remember ideas, not so much the yeah. point A, point B, point C, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I'm I'm a big picture thinker. Me too. Um, so I think it really starts with going inwards and identifying where you're feeling the lack the most currently? Is it that, you know, in your example, taking care of so many different people and not really taking care of yourself? Is it that maybe you're in a role of taking care of people instead of spending time with people? Yeah. Uh, You know, like maybe you have people over to your house for, for Sunday dinner, but you're busy in the kitchen and setting the table and cleaning up afterwards. And you don't actually get that juicy community time of spending relaxed, intimate time with people you love. That's a huge difference between those two. Huge Huge difference. Huge (laughs) difference. Not saying that being in service to people isn't being in communion with them because it absolutely is, but just balancing that, understanding that. You can be in service with people and lack that deep, like face to face, heart to heart kind of conversation type because you're too busy cleaning yeah. up them or taking care of them. Yeah. So, is it that you need to create more and maybe next Sunday dinner order in or say let's do a potluck or something like that so that you can actually commune with people? Um, maybe it's that you're just exhausted. So, and you, uh, find some way, whether it's asking for somebody for help, which your friends and family and people who love you want to help you. You're not a burden. If you ask people for help, people can always say no. (laughs) Let's remember that people can always say no. So maybe it's asking somebody to pick up the slack for you in some way so that you can maybe sleep in a little bit longer or have an evening to yourself once a week, something like that. And then when that time to yourself, maybe you have to do your own self-discovery. What would feel good to you? Would it feel good to kind of like go out on a drive by yourself or maybe stay home and take a bath or maybe do some journaling or some yoga yeah. or read a book that you've been dying to get to, whether yeah. it's a personal growth book or just like a fun fiction book, yeah. whatever it is. I, I think a lot of it has to start. There's so many different options, so many different yeah. answers to this question that it has to start with where am I feeling the lack? right now and then using a little bit of creativity and asking for support from people in your uh, family and in your community and seeing how you can give yourself what you are really needing because it's so easy to say oh go get a massage get your nails done get this get that like oh I hate that yeah like so you much more told me you need self care. Get your nails done. I'm like, I hate getting my nails done. I really, <laughs> it's not fun for me at all. I hate it. I'd rather do my nails myself while watching a movie. Like, it's just like I that. Is, it's a burden to get it going yeah. out, making an appointment, doing the research, finding a person, sitting there for like show. an hour. <laughs> Sitting still for an hour is so hard for me. That is a burden for me. That is not self-care. So it's very much a personal discovery process and not being afraid to ask for support. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And also when, you know, when we give other people the permission to say no, giving ourselves that same permission to say no when we need to, right? Yeah. Which I think is something that we all struggle with. Guess what? The world's not going to fall apart without all the pieces. It's not going to fall apart if you say no to this person or that person. And if you only get through a few items on your to-do list, you know, the world will will go on. It'll be fine. Okay. (laughs) We're going to hop into some hot seat questions. So here we go. Um, Kiki asked, I feel my discomfort with my body, um, is really holding me back from living my life. I don't go on vacation. The thought of wearing a swimsuit is terrifying. I can relate to this. And even though I know my boyfriend loves me, I feel awkward during sex because I'm so insecure about how I look. What would you say to her? A couple things. One, mirror work. Take off all your clothes. Look at yourself in the mirror. I and love that exercise. <laughs> It's going to be that on so many people. <laughs> it's going to be crazy uncomfortable. Yeah. It's going to be crazy uncomfortable. Yeah. You're going to probably hate every second of it, but 
you can choose to do something that will move you forward or to stay stuck. It's uh, choose your, choose your discomfort, right? (laughs) Choose the discomfort that's going to keep you stuck where you're at or choose the discomfort that's going to move you along at some point. It might take a while. Try mirror work. Try looking at your body naked in the mirror for 30 seconds before you jump into the shower, looking at it. And then I like to pair mirror work with affirmations. So it totally feels fake at first. Yes, it does. (laughs) It feels so fake at first. And I am a strong believer in the fake it until you make it camp. Um, Looking at yourself and just finding something to give praise to, whether it's your hair or your eyes. Eyes are a good one. A lot of people really like their eyes, especially if it's like colored eyes. Um, People really like that. Um, Maybe it's your lips. Maybe it's your shoulders. Maybe it's like the curve of your low back or that indent of the spine or your Pose or just something, your fingers, like find something to praise. Yeah. And just do that. Sit with the discomfort of looking at yourself until it's no longer crazy, discomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable, I guess. Yeah. And then practice giving yourself praise instead of criticism. It yeah. is a matter of our brains. We have so much more control over our brains than we think. So it's a matter know, of rewiring sure. our habitual thought patterns from critical, critical, critical to critical. Oop, do I really want to go down this path? Yeah. Let's put something positive. Let's put something praise. Let's put something joyful and kind instead. Yeah, I love that. One one practice that I have that I've I've started really using regularly. Um, when I get ready in the morning, I'm an avid wearer of body lotion. Like I will not go by I will not let a day go by when I get out of the shower that I don't put body lotion on. It's just my skin's really dry, it gets really irritated, it's a must for me. Um, so one practice I've gotten into doing is when I put my body lotion on, I always do it in front of the mirror. I've always got music playing in the background. And when I put it on, you know, I'm looking at my body in, in a way where like I'm the way I'm kind of moving my body around and putting the lotion on. It's like, I'm bringing out, it's like, I'm, I'm pulling out the areas that I think are beautiful yeah. and giving love to the areas that are really, that I don't think are, and that I'll probably yeah. never fall in love with, but that's okay. And that's um, fine. But again, looking at that whole package, right? And if, if I can just add one more thing, I remember this past New Year's, I went on a trip with the family. We went yep. to a beach um, and I had gained some weight and I was like sitting in my beach chair being like, oh, maybe I should hide my bikini. Yep. Like my belly is so big right now, like all this kind of stuff. And I was like, all right, let's practice what you preach, huh? Yeah. So then I shifted my focus to body neutrality. Body neutrality is recognizing what your body does for you versus what how it looks. So I was like, actually, my body is digesting all this yummy Colombian food. It almost mm. never gets seasick. I don't really get nauseous. I have a yep. tank of steel in there that I can like <laughs> withstand anything I throw at it. Like I've been nauseous like three times in my life. Like, Billy, yeah. you're doing a great job. Yeah. And that shifted my focus away from my insecurities about the way I looked and instead toward gratitude towards what my body does for me. And that let yeah. me let go of my, um, should I cover up or not? Should I wear this or not? And instead focus on, all right, time to enjoy my vacation. Absolutely. And I can guarantee if you were to sat down and write a list of all the things that your body does for you, you could probably be busy for the next couple of years doing that as a project, (laughs) right? Because the body does a lot of things on its own without any help from us whatsoever, right? I love that. Um, Okay, so I'm hoping I think it's Olga or Olga. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. How do you how do I get out of my head and just love my body now? I would love to get all dressed up and wear sexy clothes, maybe even take some food wash shots, um, which I've always wanted to do. But I currently have. Sorry, but I currently have so much weight to lose and I feel like I have to hide my body until I lose weight. I'm working out, eating healthy, and I've already lost some weight, but I feel like I can't really love my body until I actually get there. So it's kind of the same thing, sort of, I guess, but. What's your take it's on similar. that? similar. And uh, there's so many things I can say about this, but really, you're not going to start loving your body until you start loving your body. Yeah. External circumstances will not change your internal situation. Yeah. You have to just start if you want to get to there. Yeah. If you wait until you've lost all that weight, you're just going to end up in that group of people who thought losing weight would make them love themselves and wondering why don't, why they don't suddenly love themselves now that they hit their goal weight. 
or you're going to be in that state of just five more pounds, 10 more pounds, yep. more pounds, and I'll have made it. Or like I met my weight goal, but now I look, now my skin is loose, you know, yeah. because I lost so much weight or now, now my muscles look uh, flabby because they're not super strong because I've just been focusing on losing weight. There's always going to be something always. until you decide that there's not always going to be something. You yeah. have to just start, start with, um, start with affirmations. I have the body deck, which has 77 folk affirmations on helping you connect to your body. Um, that's a great place to start or write your own affirmations, find yeah. your biggest insecurities and rewrite them as affirmations. Yeah. Even though I don't love my belly, I appreciate how my belly digests all my food and has, it helps me like have a fun time. You know, all yeah. the, you don't have to start loving a specific body part. Like I said earlier, but find ways to practice gratitude towards your body, yeah. acceptance towards your body, take care of your body, eating um, foods that make you feel good, uh, exercising regularly. Those are things that the body enjoys and those yeah. are a good way to take care of your body. But if your mind is out of alignment with your actions, if you're exercising because you hate yourself, then getting to your goal weight is not going to change that. You're still yeah. going to hate yourself. Absolutely. You have to just start wherever you are because any change is more effective when there's love behind it. Like, Absolutely. have you ever been in a relationship with somebody and there's this habit of theirs that grinds your gears and makes you go crazy and you start nagging them, yelling at them? How effective is that? Has that no, I... <laughs> changed by somebody yelling at them? You suck. You should do it differently. Hate not is not all. how change happens. Love is how change happens. You might be able to get somebody's behavior to change if you said, hey, I'm sorry, but this really hurts me. Or this makes me feel like um, not a member of the team. Or, you know, can we talk about a way that we can change this so that we can feel more in sync? Um, I really love you. And I, I just, this is a big struggle for me. That yes. conversation is going to get you a lot farther than you suck. You got to change. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So just practice. Just start. Use affirmations. Use uh, meditation. Um, try like body awareness meditation because uh, this person, Olga, said they were in their head. So get out of your head. Get into your body. Do a body yeah. scan. Laying on your bed. What's up with my toes? What's up with my ankles? What's up with yeah. my legs? Just like feeling the different parts of your body. You can squeeze them and release them to connect to this physical sensation of, to help you mentally connect to the physical sensation of that body part. Yes. Get into your body with that exercise and start reframing your thoughts now. It will, like I said before, it will feel fake in the beginning. It will feel forced. It will feel weird, awkward, and uncomfortable. That's just the reality of the situation. Change is uncomfortable. <laughs> that yes, is it is. And yeah, it's where that. it's uncomfortable, that's where the most powerful change can usually happen. So yeah. absolutely hands down, you know, don't, don't be squeamish about it. Yeah. Compassion towards yourself. Start practicing love and compassion towards yourself right now, because it's not suddenly going to change when you hit your goal weight. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I love this. This is, a, this is an awesome conversation. Um, and honestly, I cannot wait to have you back on the show. Um, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> when, uh, where can people get a hold of you if they're looking for you, if they want to follow you, if they're interested in your work? Um, where do you mm -hmm. want them to go? Yeah. So if you're just interested in checking out my work, Embodied Art Boudoir, it'll be in the show notes, right? Yes. Yes. It's it kind will. of a tricky uh, French spelling. Why though? Why? <laughs> it's kind <laughs> of a tricky spelling. So just check the show notes. It'll be in there. Okay. Um, if you want to get the real me, that's going to be on my email list. Okay. Uh, so I send an email once a week with just writing from the heart as well I love as your emails, um, blog posts. They're so juicy. Yeah. yeah, They're from the heart. That's why yeah. they're good. <laughs> wow. um, photos. So you can see an example of what my clients actually look like. All different body types, all different shapes, size, ages being celebrated. Um, and then if I have any promotions or whatever going on, my email list is always the first one to find out about that. I have pulled back a lot from social media, partially because of the things that you were talking about, it just drives a lot of comparison. Um, and it drives a lot of mental drama, yes. uh, which is, is very agitating. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it is. It, it's, a, you know, there's this mindfulness practice for social media on its own, I think, could mm, be a course. <laughs> yes. 100%. You know? 100%. 
Yeah. So my, um, my website, my email newsletter, and if you want a little tool that can start helping you make those changes today, the body deck, my affirmation card deck is an excellent little tool. It's only 33 bucks. It's on Etsy. Um, you can find that on my website as well. Um, and that's just a, a great little tool to help you start practicing the, the change that you want to see in yourself. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. And yes, everything will be included in the show notes. So thank you so much, Gabby, for joining us here today. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions for myself or for Gabby, I can pass them on to her. But please do. I encourage you to connect with her online. Um, Email me at maria at thefemcoach.com. And we'll see you next time. Lots of love, you guys.